Hey everyone, welcome to another TEAS lesson. I hope you're all happy studying and making progress. So today we're going to look at the muscular system, right? Previously we looked at, we looked at the, the nervous system, so now we are moving on to the muscular system. Because the previous chapter was broken into two new chapters, so you're going to see new learning objectives. You need to identify the different structures of the muscular system, including the three types of muscle tissues. Oh, I'm missing an S here. Especially which one is voluntary, which one is involuntary. And the second, describe the functions of the muscular system. Next, describe how the nervous system controls the muscles. So this is an old topic that's, um, that is in T6, so that's not new. And um, this is not in the learning objectives, but I think it's a pretty big change for the muscular system. And um, it definitely adds more materials that you need to study. So this new topic is about the gross anatomy of skeletal muscles. And basically you need to know the major muscles. You need to know their names. You need to know where they're located. All right, so um, I will provide you with what muscles you need to remember, what, what muscles you need to learn for this particular objective. Okay, now here's a comparison between the three types of muscles. Skeletal muscles are involved in generating body movement. They are attached to bones, right? So when the skeletal muscles contract, they pull the bones and that generates movement. And skeletal muscles are very strong, right? They generate a strong force. Our cardiac muscles are found in the heart, right? And these cardiac muscles contract, and that's basically what the heartbeat is, right? When the muscles contract, they can pump blood into your body, and that's um, heartbeat. And last, a smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is probably the, the weakest muscle among all the three. Smooth muscle does not generate a very strong force. So they generate that consistent but weak contraction. Because they're found in the walls of hollow organs and tracts and passageways, um, they move things in a kind of slow motion. You don't want them to go very strongly, very quickly, because that's, that's not good news, right? Imagine your bowel movement gets very fast, it gets very... Uh, a violent, that's, that's pretty bad, right? So you want the smooth muscle to not be too strong, uh, but generate that consistent, uh, weak contraction to move things around, right? Okay, now here's the important part. Which one is voluntary? Which one is involuntary? Okay, so I have the hint here. Skeletal muscles can be controlled consciously. So would that be voluntary or involuntary? Voluntary, right? Cardiac muscle cannot be controlled consciously, and same as smooth muscle. So that means they are both right, involuntary. I know we have mentioned this quite a bit in the nervous system, but it's just a, a good refresher, right? Uh, because this information is important. Now, the TIS manual also mentions striation. Um, I think it's a minor fact because I can't think of you know, how they can... Um, make questions on that, right? The only thing they can do is to ask you which one has striation and which one doesn't. Although I don't think it's a very, a, a very clever way or advanced way to ask that question. So um, as long as you can remember which one has striation, which one doesn't, I think you can probably handle the question. Skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles are very strong, right? They generate strong uh, force, so they have striations and smooth muscle does not. Okay, now the reason why I mentioned the amount of force is that striation is generated by the pattern of the actin and the myosin protein filaments. Now, if they are arranged very regularly, I'll show you in a second what it looks like. If they're arranged uh, in a very regular way, they can generate more force. Okay. So for the two strongest ones, skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles, they do have that pattern, right? They, because they need to be strong. So that's why they have that alternating light and dark pattern, which is striation. And smooth muscle, 
uh, does not have to generate very strong force, right? So the actin and myosin filaments are not arranged in that uh, regular pattern. They're kind of scattered around. So that's why smooth muscle does not have striations. Uh, now, if you don't know what striations look like, so this is a comparison, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and this is smooth muscle. Okay. So you can see these are the lines, right, in skeletal muscles. So all those lines uh, basically reflect the uh, that dark pattern. And if you don't see lines, that's a light pattern, right? That alternating pattern between light and dark, that's what causes striation. And same thing here, right? In the cardiac muscle, you can see some lines over here. So that's the striations in cardiac muscle. In smooth muscle, um, you don't really see any lines. All right, that's the comparison between the three types of muscle tissues. So here's a practice question. Which of the following muscles is involuntary? And make sure you select all that apply. So the answer is smooth and cardiac, right? You can't really control your heartbeat. You can't really control the movement of your bowel, right? Or the uh, constriction or dilation of your blood vessels, right? B and C are the correct answers. Now, I want to point out that tendon is not a type of muscle tissue. So tendons are made up of very tough connective tissue, okay, not muscle tissue, connective tissue. Okay, so that's why A is not the correct answer. Okay, second question. This muscle tissue is a critical component found in the walls of arteries to regulate blood pressure as well as in visceral organs and passageways to move materials through the body. So which muscle tissue is it? A, right, smooth muscle. I oh, don't know why there's that noise. So smooth muscle is found in the walls of blood vessels. So when smooth muscle contracts, that will lead to the constriction of blood vessels. Okay? And as you can imagine, that's going to increase the blood pressure, BP, blood pressure. When the smooth muscles are relaxed, okay? so relaxation, that's going to uh, lead to dilation of blood vessels, right? Making the blood vessels wider, and that is going to decrease the blood pressure. Okay. All right. Um, something that's pretty important, I've seen this in both T6 and T7. So I want to point this out so that you're prepared. And this is about tendons versus ligaments, okay? So which one connects muscle to bone, and which one connects bone to bone. Okay, so hopefully you have the answers. So tendon connects muscle to bone, and ligament connects bone to bone. So they are both made up of uh, very tough connective tissues. So they are used as um, anchoring uh, structures, right? Because they're so strong, and we absolutely want muscles to stay on to stay to bones or bones to bones right the, the joint that's the difference between tendons and ligaments and i have this uh, very cool diagram which can show you what tendons look like okay so you can see this is a big piece of muscle okay and then that's the bone so the tendon is this kind of white tissue right here so this tendon attaches this muscle to this bone right so if the tendon is not strong, then that means your muscle can fall off the bone very easily, right? Which is really, really bad. 